So what are um, what are some of the differences between uh, LiDAR and camera-based systems? I have a camera-based system on my uh, Subaru stereo. Um, it's so it works really well, but occasionally on like a curve, like there's two curves in my town that when I go around, the brakes want to slam on. I get the warning signal, so I go, oh, gosh, is it this? Would I be better served if I also had LiDAR in this car? So why don't you just tell me like what some of the differences are? Why is a LiDAR more of a hammer than you need, so to speak, as you mentioned? And what kind of advantages do, do uh, cameras offer? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question and sets up the story well. Um, but first, I'd like to ask, what year is your Subaru? 2016. So I have a 2016 Subaru as well. And that um, stereo vision system is made by Hitachi. <clears throat> and um, I also think it works incredibly well. I also mm -hmm. have a Volvo, which has a mobilized system. It's a 2019 Volvo with a, a mobilized system. And so I'm able to compare and contrast, you know, stereo vision versus monocular vision. Um, and, and honestly, they each have their benefits. I find the Subaru to be much quicker at responding to cars in front of me and keeping a, a, a precise distance. Um, and yes, it does have issues, although I find the issues are going around a corner. If there's a car in front of me and I have it in auto follow, if the corner is very sharp, it, the field of view loses the car in front of me and hits the accelerator. And so sometimes I find myself hitting the brakes during a corner. What you're describing, I think, is that your system is losing the roadway. Maybe the markings along the side of the road are not clear. So the system is doing what's called road segmentation to understand that the road is curved. So it needs to be worried about things that curve off to the left or the right, not that rail right in front of you. So it loses right. the road. And then it sees the rail and it's not just the reflectors, it probably has seen the whole rail. And it's like, whoa, need to hit the bricks, right? right. So both of the problems I just described, I think are like computer vision problems. Um, and they're problems that clearly will be solved with time, with better algorithms and better compute. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, not a, it's not an inherent problem of a camera per se, it's, it's just, um, it's uh, it's 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 just we need better algorithms to compute, and that is happening. The car, it's yeah, it's funny you say that. The car actually saved me on the first, the second day I owned it. I would, I was pulling into traffic, and like you said, it was it's an incredibly fast system. I was pulling into traffic. I it was a it's a difficult merge. I was looking ahead, and then I looked to my left, and all of a sudden, somebody came from the right lane into my lane. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the system just stops on a dime. And I'm like, you know, it was jarring. But for that split, I would have, we would have smashed into each other. There's no doubt about it. But for that moment, it, it saved me. Um, yeah, so it's a tremendously beneficial system, obviously. Um, so what is it that your company uh, does? And where, what kind of space does it play in with regard to cameras? Okay, and LiDAR is uh, really, really good about... Um, of, about sort of in, in, you know, close to the car, painting a precise picture of pretty much everything that's around it. Now, LiDAR sends beams of lights out. It scans with a, you know, single or multiple uh, lasers, right? And so it requires the beam, the, the photons to go out, bounce off something and come back. And that takes time. And um, it also uh, does it in rows. So it's inherently much, much lower resolution than than a camera, which is taking, you know, whatever, 1 million, 5 million, 8 million pixels in every frame. So it's a very different technology. So LiDAR is inherently low resolution. It requires uh, scanning the scene multiple times to actually paint a complete picture. So that could take, you know, a quarter of a second, right? Or eighth of a second to, to scan a scene properly. And another issue LiDAR has is that, you know, beyond say 50 or 75 meters, the photons go out and they bounce off the road and they keep going. So they, they don't come back and that's called glancing, the glancing angle. And so, you know, beyond like 50, 100 meters, LiDARs are not good at detecting where's the road, which is kind of critical to determine if something's sitting above the road. So that, that brings me, so 
And also because of the optoelectronics, the gigahertz speeds needed to detect the speed of a photon, uh, it's really, really expensive. It's crazy expensive to build a LIDAR. And yes, costs are coming down, but still, it's a very, very expensive piece of equipment. And the ones who that spin, you know, uh, break every 7,000 hours. So they would need to be replaced, you know, in robo taxis very often or consumer vehicles. So there are a lot of inherent issues with LIDAR. Um, so that brings me to what NODAR does. N NODAR is doing what your Subaru Hitachi system is doing. We're just doing it uh, differently and better in that, um, the Subaru system, the cameras are very close together. And the reason is because the alignment, the whole measurement of depth is dependent upon precise alignment of the cameras. So they put a thick beam of, of, of metal between the cameras so that they can't bend and it can't adjust and move. And um, you know, basically stays in alignment and gets precise measurements out to like 50, 75 meters and that's it. And so you'll notice your Subaru, if you put it in auto follow mode, it won't pick up a car until it's about 50, 60 meters in front of you, which right. in many situations is just way too late, right? It's way too late if you're going 80 miles an hour it's it, or even 50 miles an hour. Um, and it's too late if you're like coming down and there's stopped traffic, you're on a highway, like here at Route 2, you're going 50, 60 miles an hour and there's a stoplight where everybody stopped. Well, by the time you get to 50 meters, you know, the system has to slam on the brakes uh, and it's very dangerous. So um, NODAR is, uh, we're, we're doing that alignment in software uh, because computers improved, you know, software's improved algorithms, cameras are incredibly sensitive and high resolution. So we can now move the cameras apart. So the baseline between them, you know, let's say it's the width of the car, which is like 1.2 meters, that, is proportional to the range that we can see. So now we can see 500, 750 meters out, depending on the, oh. yeah, so that's super cool. And um, like we have a lot of traction, for instance, in the trucking market where, you know, in my opinion, I think we're gonna see automated trucks, L4 trucks on the road before any other form of automation. And those trucks need to see a long way down, like 350 meters in order to stop or avoid say, a a fallen motorcyclist, right? You don't want to run over mm -hmm. that. So the trucking market's super interested in what we're doing and they're placing our cameras like three meters apart on top of the truck or in the mirrors, right? And so that we can see a thousand meters for that. We could detect a car, another car at a thousand meters, a kilometer away. So have you paired your software with actual camera systems and it's in use now? We pair our software with cameras and we're um, yeah. relatively agnostic to cameras. You know, the one criteria is that the cameras have to take the, each frame or each photo at the same time. So that's called hardware triggering and all cameras have it these days. Um, otherwise, we, we work with infrared cameras. We work with uh, 20 megapixel cameras, one megapixel cameras. Um, so you can imagine, and also the fields of view, like anywhere from, um, uh, you know, 15 degree field of view for super long range, all the way out to 120 degree field of view for kind of shorter range, but um, more side visibility. Well, I appreciate you spending some time with me uh, today and hopefully I'll get to catch up with you at a show in the future.